So I'm just saying that if you are still smoking with out there and you put a limitation on it, you are very lucky. Yeah, you can smoke it till 90. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you get me that? Yeah. Like, um, so I'll I'll just take that far. Please don't go, don't go above that. Welcome to another interesting and exciting episode of the So Nigerian Podcast. Is there- Yes, sir. And today we'll be talking about the effects of drug abuse. Onkolos, Onkolos. <laughs> you probably have been wondering where Onkolos or where where he came from. You know, you just want to know where Onkolos came from. Today we are going to be telling you about the different effects. And with us, we're going to have an interesting guest. He's, he's a listener of the podcast. And he sent us an email that he wanted to tell us about his own experience and journey. And then we're like, Oh, why not so Nigerian so if you're, if you're a listener you sort of like you know maybe you want to tell us about something yeah, or whatever experiences and all that. yeah you know you can always just reach out reach out send us an email and they will respond to that so before we go on before we, anything if you're listening on audio first things first please I beg I beg subscribe to the YouTube subscribe it's not that hard it's just it's just you're listening on audio if you want to go and watch your favorite Parts, yeah. audio part just in video YouTube. just go to YouTube it's not even hard like it's not it's not really not that hard you get <laughs> so and um, today let me even introduce our, our guest Benny Man Benny Soldier <laughs> 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 what's good my bro my guy I'm alright I'm straight bro are you, are you, you, don't, you don't you don't you just day, you just day one cry <laughs> <laughs> no, I like him. He's very like the chill guy. Very chill guy. Like the energy. Yeah. yeah f- no stress. We feel your vibes. No stress. Yeah. Let <laughs> me just say that. All good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing now? What's going on? Are you you okay? I'm okay. I'm straight, bro. Yeah, straight. Yeah. No, he just the you're straight, you're straight, you're straight, you're straight. Straight is another meaning for like I'm fine. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I don't you, go New York. You know, you <laughs> know, you don't know, be in New York. I don't you know, go anywhere. Don't go New York. Yeah, before you adapt. <laughs> 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 English to the max because English now language is what it's supposed to. Definitely, definitely. I feel you. I feel you, my bro. And um, we're welcome today. And uh, we're going to be sh- you're going to be sharing your experience and also going to be asking you a couple of questions oh, okay. and all that stuff. But first, how did you how did you find So Nigerian Podcast? So Nigerian like? Podcast was like when the did you whole just... thing for me, like that really helped me because I was feeling some type of way, like, oh, I'm the only person in this world that I was feeling like this because mm. You guys are talking about your SACPA. I heard an episode about SACPA. <laughs> and someone saying that even if he doesn't have any money, that he has to make sure he keeps his Spotify's um, money. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> so, bro, you don't bust your head. So I was listening, I was like, wow. So this guy actually feel like this, like, wow, it's... Really crazy. Out Speaking there. on Spotify, make sure you guys listen on Spotify and everywhere you listen to podcasts, share on yeah. Spotify. Our Q&A is also buzzing. You guys should also like check that out too. So we always add money for Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> we always add money to listen to. Bro, like I really do appreciate that. Like even during your trying times, you add yeah, money you, to listen you, to, you, to, you subscribe to your Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> And that's 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 I like it really means a lot to us to be honest, you know. And like speaking on Spotify on our last episode, that's the H and R factor. We had some little like question and answers. We had like questions on what do you guys think. So we're just going to run through some of them. First, we are from TDB. This is DJ Balogun shout out to him. He's actually my personal friend. So like it was really nice for him to like he listens to the podcast as well. So it was like in terms of changing accent, I know we said something about changing accents. Like it's a code switching, not exactly changing <laughs> accents. So I don't, I don't know what, what code switching is. <laughs> Maybe DJ Balogun. We are going to. If do... you want, if you want tech, them. No, no, no. I, I feel like tech, bro. I, I feel like you just get away. Like I feel like code switching is maybe if you're in a certain area, you act like that and talk like that. Oh, bro, so I don't I feel like it's possible to change your accent. So people yeah. do do like a fake accent. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't come natural. That's, yeah, it doesn't yeah. come natural. That's what I'm saying. Definitely, you can. You see people speaking like. Five different accents. Like they can Definitely, yeah. yeah. Well, still, yeah. still the, they, when they speak naturally, you can hear that. You can hear that this is this mm, is their real accent. Yeah. Yeah. You true, know when true, it's, true, when true, it's, true, true. So and then also um, we have T Silva. T Silva says um, to me, speaking diction isn't bad because English is white man's language. So if we're going to speak, it ought to sound like how they do. Also, we don't mm. appreciate people speaking Yoruba in diction. 
Mm. I don't totally agree with what she's saying, though. I don't, I mean, from what I hear, what I yeah. can interpret is her saying, or what I can comprehend her saying, um, because of speaking their language, it must sound the way they sound. I don't, I don't think that's necessary. But it's their language. It doesn't yeah, mean no, there's no rules to it. Like, the, what she further what, said what, was what, like, Yoruba does have like a diction. Like, I actually feel your, language. But it does actually. People over exaggerate language. Language doesn't have to be you speaking the perfect mm. language. It's just about you no, communicating. You yeah. If you understand yeah. what I'm saying, that's all. Once you can pass a fair. message. That's fair. all. Fair. Fair. I'm a linguist. I study linguistics and languages. Ah, ah. Oh, what? <laughs> This guy, the man of the people who are artists, yeah. linguistics, everything. Well, well, let's call it short. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Adela also said most Nigerians I know take offense when you mispronounce their names because she further said, um, I'm trying to talk to you for about five minutes. So why do I actually need to correct you? Like, um, if you call me Adiola, yeah, you just <laughs> funny how the stay. person is Adiola. Adiola, shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Adiola. <laughs> So she really mentioned, mentioned that name. Yeah, yeah we mentioned that name. She probably took offense. <laughs> she took offense. We apologize. We really. apologize. But, you know, she really doesn't have that luxury of time to... Um, exactly. If you want to call her Adiola, like, yeah. yeah, we're not trying to be friends. You don't need to call me. I don't need to start correcting you. But that's actually you know, a fair point too. So, like, so many other ones that we can't really run through. Yeah. Toxic Bar. I don't know why your name is Toxic Bar. Also said... Um, I mean, don't man, I know Sabi my language. Ah, all these people, all these Isaacs people. But why is what's wrong? What's the other people? <laughs> see me, I'm going to start, see, I'll learn my language and I'll start a, list, I'll start a school for, I don't know, my, I don't know what they call I my people, language. They don't used to know their languages. I don't know. I, I don't know. know what they call my language, but. But fair, fair, fair. Moving on, moving on. You guys should just make sure you subscribe on Spotify, subscribe to our YouTube as well. Like, it really does mean a lot to us if you guys could subscribe yeah. to our YouTube. And um, Benny, how far now? I did fine, bro. Yeah, how was your, how was your background like? Just, just curious. Um, You're really? an artist, Abby. Yeah, I'm an artist. I make music. Actually. You grew up in church, have you? Yeah, I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> choir, precisely. Na- okay. You, you choir. in ca- uh, choir? choir? I was in choir. So <laughs> choir. Yeah. Bro, Nigerian artist and choir. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up in church, Nigerian artist. <laughs> no, so, regardless of the fact that I don't really fancy the church thing anymore, but I still feel like church is still values in me. No, definitely. 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 Yeah. So, how, how was that... Okay, so like, what's the story? What's the, you grew up in church and then you yeah, you started to divert okay. to Onkulus. No, not really. Like, um, one thing I feel like at a certain time, mm. drugs is really bad, obviously. Yeah, but drugs makes you think out of the box. Mm. You question everything, mm. even your friendship and stuff like that. Even your parents. They can do something to you and you're questioning. Like, on a very good day, you shouldn't do that because you feel like, ah, oh, they are my friend. They give birth to me. They love me. Blah, blah. But drugs make you like, why do they have to do that? They don't need that. Like, okay, for example... So now, you only give drugs PR? Like. No. <laughs> drugs are... No, drugs is going to fuck you up. Like, yeah, definitely. It's definitely. going to fuck you up. Like, people you don't need to second guess. It's to make you second guess them. Mm. Yes. And, man, on the long road, like, people will look at you and probably be like, oh... They won't even tell you. True, They will true. show up and they'll be like, everything is good. Yeah. But I can tell you there's a limitation to how they are going to roll with you. But what kind of, what kind of like family upbringing did you have? Like, aside from the church the part, church, like, yeah. like, what else? What else? How did you, with your what family, how did you get know. like? Okay, I'm going to cut it short. Like, let me just explain it to you. As a child, I've known, I didn't know drugs. I didn't know weed was a drug. Mm. You get me? I had this uncle that I used to stay with yeah. us. And my dad is always like trying to tell him to go away, go away, go away, go away. Yeah. And he's begging and begging and begging. Just for one reason. He smokes weed. Mm. Mm-hmm. He get... On the long run, he had to leave. Yeah. But the whole thing there was like... I only knew he smokes. I wasn't... I didn't even know maybe... What he was smoking. What he was smoking or yeah. anything. But... Um, initial my initial was into drug was, what was your first contact like drugs and all of that stuff like how did you my first contact how was, did you just you know what just tell us the story how did you get into drugs and yeah. like what you know, type of drugs people, like people make a mistake yeah. you get me um, and I'm not condemning anybody that does whatever they do to get through whatever they do but I'll tell you that you're better off without it yeah you're better off without it don't, don't let anybody 
be an advocate because anybody is doing it, you have you feel a validation for doing it. No, 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 no. Mm, mm. Yeah, because there's you can point to one thousand successful people that do it. You can point to a million unsuccessful people that do it. So you just have to find your own balance. Like you don't need it. That's one thing I know. There's nothing that goes way more than natural. So my first contact with drugs initially, like they yeah. call it the gateway drugs. The what? Gateway drugs. Uh, which one be all those ones? Like, you, don't say, you don't say me, I never, I don't. Okay, <laughs> what, what, what is gateway drugs? The word gateway is, it means something that is going to introduce you to other things. Hmm. It is weed. Hmm. Weed is the gateway drugs. People feel like smoking weed is cool, but over the long, you can't be smoking weed in over two, three years and you won't be in the environment Oops. of people taking other drugs. Hmm. Hmm. You get? Yeah. Most people don't know that. So, Initially, when I I was probably in like two hundred or two hundred level, and there used to be a couple guys at my back door smoking weed every from morning to night. And I went, I every time I show up, yeah. when they talk to me and belittle me like, oh, he doesn't smoke weed, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. Yeah, I felt like so. The, I felt like probably two months of me shuffling them off. Like I don't need this, I don't need this. That was a day I just went back to the backyard and mm. they were like. Oh, bro, this, that, this, that, this, that. They were talking again. I was like, bring the thing, let me smoke and enjoy mm. myself. So, so basically, now, peer influence, because you see, you saw them doing it, and then, you know, the fact that they're always looking down on you, like, this one is not, not, not bolo, this one, you know, savvy. So, you wanted to, like, change that, so among, you know, change. Was, was that it? Was that, was that what it was for you? I actually felt like I was going to do it for. To look cool. I was going to do it. And shuffle it off like nothing really happened. Like I know you wanted to look cool. Yeah. Like, so the moment to... I smoked that thing and went back into my room, like <laughs> my guy sit things. I swear down, like <laughs> I started feeling some kind of way. Like I couldn't explain to nobody that I just like let me just put it in a word. Like my brains were pouring like a liquid <laughs> inside my head. And I was feeling like, oh my god, like who is driving? In last car in my head, get that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat down, I passed out on, I like I passed out on my bed and. Oh, what did you? What did you smoke? Just look how weed, not anything. Just look how look at like look like, green Ninja, weed. like look at green, yeah, look okay. how green weed and stuff like that. Uh, so you be Canadian law. No, not that yet. I wasn't <laughs> even introduced to that yet. That time, that was around probably twenty fourteen. You yeah. get me? So. I sat down and I felt like, oh, it's all good, man. And I didn't know what cost it. Like, mm. probably the next time they brought it again, I was like, wow, I'm mm. going to do it again. Mm. I did it. And I started feeling some kind of way. Like, anytime I smoked that thing, yeah. the way I eat, I was never really, I used to eat moderately. But when I smoked that thing, I eat excessively and mm. I'm hyperactive. I'm feeling myself, I'm jumping around, yeah. moving from place to place. I was like, wow. So I started doing it from time to time. I was doing it, doing it, doing it. I was like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> like, you gave me like, I'm not condemning anybody that is smoking weed, but I'm going to tell you, just make sure you don't go above that. Mm. Uh, did, you, did you go above that? Don't yes, you? I did. You did? Yeah. And just like, like when did you, how did you like decide that, okay, my weed wasn't doing it enough for me. I need to go above it. <laughs> weed was just like, you know, how did you feel like, like you had passed the weed you know, level for you to like try? Like, a lot of prayers. Like, yeah. it's not really play, prayer. Like, it comes with a couple associations. You get me? Yeah, you're associating with the wrong people or what? Or like... The whole thing is like, um, you might call them the wrong people or whatever. I just feel like in the midst of we smokers, you can meet some really intelligent people. That mm. Obviously, like it doesn't take away, it doesn't take away from like you know their normal abilities. Like, and, and I feel like one of the one of the perks that people push of drugs and weed is that like it makes okay, you smarter. it makes you smarter, it makes you think, think better. better. And... No, 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 it doesn't do that to you. If it's you can, if you are not, if you are not it, you are not it. Mm. <laughs> weed doesn't add. Or take away from it. But you said at the beginning that you had this creativity it's, now. It's it's creativity and all of that. That's what I'm saying. Like if you don't have it in you, you it's not going to be not, there. It's, it's not, not going to be coming out. Yeah. So you 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 you're a creative. I mean, obviously you make music. Yeah. So you're a creative person. Yeah. So would you say um your drug use your your creativity 
fraud your drug use in any way? Like, no, were you no, trying no. to make music based on music? No, but did no, your no, drug? No. Did... I was. I wasn't trying to make music. Like, I wasn't really trying to make music of drugs or anything. I was trying. To, I was. I was actually. No, the reason, the major reason why people smoke and do a lot of drugs and it just comes to one simple thing. They want to feel something else. Mm. Yeah. See, you get me now? Yeah. Like, people are not comfortable with How they this, are. Do you, you know, when, when you feel like human beings are really hard to please, even if you are, if, even if you are getting everything in this world, you might still feel like, oh, I'm not getting this, uh, this, that. I see, I lack this, I lack that, I like that. And they want to feel something else. Yeah. And trying to feel something else is like trying to escape your reality. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So probably like... But when did you know that, okay, you reach the point of like addiction, like, like, or you felt like you're addicted or like... Yeah, sorry, sorry, before before we get there. Uh, okay. I, I, me, I just want to know like the progression, okay. So like, um, you, you started with the gateway drug. Yeah. And then... Obviously, let me, my background. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a psychologist, so I have okay. like some knowledge on drug, drug use. Yeah, okay. I know there's a there's a level of there's a level you get um, with different types of drugs where um, your tolerance for it is different. Is different. So if you're smoking yeah. two wraps in a day or something, <laughs> so you you uh, have to get higher. Exactly. So like, I want to know that progression for you. Okay. First, but also when you say that progression, like. What all that type of like weed weed smoke like dandy like? Okay, so it's good. You, you, I mean, you can you know you can let name just, it. Let me just go from the point. I'll make it. I'll I'll, I'll let you people know it. Like it's so it's so easy. Like I feel like it's like a circle everybody goes through. Mm-hmm. It's like a circle of addiction everybody goes through. You get me? It's just like the height and what access, accessibility of what you have because it's your environment and the money you have determines the kind of drugs you are into. Yeah. You get me? If you are into drugs and you don't have a, like a control, like especially the gateway drugs, anything that comes to your front, you want to have a taste of it. Mm. Yeah. You get me? So let me just cause it short. Like I started with the normal weed and probably I would buy a bunch of it at 500 Naira. It comes in sack, like a mini black nylon sack. Yeah. And we are about 10 guys Rolling up, smoking, rolling up, smoking. Mm-hmm. Before you knew it, a couple guys just came from nowhere. Started, like new guys that new faces. All in school. Yeah, in school too. You get me? Like those ones, like I don't know, they they will uh, bring they will bring another another strain. Not <laughs> another strain. While we're smoking that one, they'll probably bring in like codeine and stuff like that. Like syrup. Ah, promethazine. Not promethazine. Promethazine is way high class for the yeah, environment of my school and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? You can't, see really... that. you can't see that. You can't but, see promoters. But you're in a, yeah, but what else is it? Yeah, Abuja. <laughs> no, I... I you, we, sorry, where, where was your school in? Adikuni Ajashi in Akubaru. That's in Ondo States. Ondo States, okay. yeah. Okay. So, okay. you know, they're bringing um, syrups and stuff like that. And... But all those, all those promethazine, Fenagan and all those things, they... they, they um. The Abuja now, like Abuja there's boys. Nothing, is, there's nothing you're looking for that is not over there. <laughs> <laughs> Abuja boys. <laughs> so to call it on social, they bring they will bring those stuff and everybody's passing it around. Like they are mixing with a bottle of Sprite. You get yeah. me? Everybody like there's someone blasting music in the background. Okay. And it's going around, going around, going around, going around, going around. Mm. People might be bringing out suggestion like, ah, well, there's a new stream that is in town now. Mm. There's a new. This that, that one is very it's high. This thing, but yeah. you know the funny thing, the person that brings the suggestion does have the money to buy it. Mm. So all of them will gather money, go buy them. Yeah, my my contribute money and anybody that is really boxed up. Yeah, would be like okay, let them call the person. I will pay okay for you, something like that. So that was like initial. I could still remember the first day I smoked. I left normal weed to SK. Mm-hmm. You get they were like telling me like you know there's this thing like weed does its own marketing itself <laughs> <laughs> weed doesn't need like a <coughs> commercial yeah. Yeah, marketing or yeah. TV or anything yeah. someone that smokes it will tell you about it <laughs> <laughs> somebody that smokes SK told you on more see SK what, is it? what was the PR behind SK <laughs> yeah I was like ah on more this one the high pass it go this that something like that I, I was like ah wow are you sure 
Like, oh my, no one mad, oh boy. So, you know, you know, if you mad, you know, if you do this kind of thing, like, me, then you just carry and come. This guy was like, okay, we have called the person, I'll call the plug, make it carry and come. We brought it. We bought it for the first time. You know the thing about Willy, um, the high is like a staircase. Like, I don't know how I can explain to you. It was the higher you go, you don't want to go back to that one that the you your body runs out. Like, this body, the body is way too strong. Like, I don't understand the way the body works. Like, if you used to smoke um one wrap before, probably after smoking it for like a month or two months, you might smoke one wrap and you're not good. Yeah. You need two wrap to catch up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your dependency it. level is going higher mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. higher and yeah. higher. Or you are trying a new string that is probably like times four. Of you a single wrap of it is like times times four of what you used to smoke before. Mm, mm, mm. I feel you. I'm just saying, like, man. so moving higher, SK, where, that is like a trend, a new trend always come out. When, the, 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 when people don't really understand the thing about drug, like, a new drug will always pop up in the market. As long as scientists exist. <laughs> <laughs> and then they could come. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> always go see we can see <laughs> So, <coughs> I was in SK for a while. I, then after so, SK, you moved on to what? After SK, probably, let me think about, okay, after SK, yeah, Ghanaian loud, Gan- Canadian loud, Ghana loud. Arizona came in. Arizona. Mm. Mm. After Arizona, what came in? Mm. When did Colorado come in? No, Colorado came in very late. Very late. Really? Yeah, Colorado came in around 2016, 2017. Ah, you don't even push Colorado since then? No, it's not like I was pushing it or anything. Like, it flooded my school. Yeah. You get me? I was really, no, I didn't want to do it because I was seeing the reaction on people and stuff like that. So the first day I tried it, like, and I knew that... The first day you tried Colorado, I was yeah, like... I knew I was like, my body was already gone into drugs. Like, no, this, this this body is gone already. Like, I was in my room. I locked up my room. That was like initially when I started production and stuff like that. Yeah. Music production and everything. Yeah. No students were, students were around. It was like an holiday, but I didn't used to go home for holiday because I was yeah. always in school and stuff like that. Definitely. So I was in school and I locked my <coughs> I locked my room, my mm. key. I was the only person in the room, mm. and I tied the whole thing and smoked it. I actually got high above the cloud and stuff like that, but I wasn't reacting like other people used to react, like they are mad or anything. Because mm. you're already an agba. <laughs> No, I'm not saying. <laughs> I, 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 I initially started feeling like this thing used to make other people go naughty and nuts and yeah. go crazy, hit their head on the wall, do a lot of crazy stuff. But me, the first time I'm trying it, nothing happened. So I was like, Omo, don't do this again. Don't do this again. So the second time you tried, did anything ever happen to you in Colorado? I didn't do it. I didn't do it again. Did you do Colorado again? Yeah. Why? I just felt like uh, the way people were getting hooked on it, I didn't like it. So you didn't want to be too into... On it. I didn't want to be hooked on it. But, but prior because to of the, seeing the effects of it amongst your guys. I wouldn't like to fall victim. Regardless of the fact like it did it happen to me the first time, doesn't mean if no. I keep taking it, it will happen to me one day. Mm. 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 True. But prior to your um, Colorado use, did he, had you already come to know that you had been addicted to drugs? Mm, I wouldn't say... No. I didn't even talk about the pills. Hmm. You did pills too? Yeah. You did syrup, you did pills, everything. I did syrup, I did pills. And they were constant. It's not as if it was a like once in a while thing. The first time I did pill, you get me? Yeah. The only person that was there with me when I did pill, like somebody brought pill for me and just dropped it like... Take. I've been seeing pills for like two years. I've been smoking for like two years. I've been seeing pills come and come yeah. and come in. I never really wanted to do it. So someone just bought pill like and dropped one search. And the search was, was, was with me for like two days. And the moment I took it and I passed out, hmm. as I was waking up, the person I was seeing in front of me was my ex-girlfriend. And she was like, this thing is going to destroy you. Hmm. Said she has seen people going down that road. I was like, me, you don't know me. You will be say I be actor, I be this, I be that. You be like, booze, you, see, be me. you get me. But unfortunately, like this thing was controlling the way my mind works. 
Like, anytime I'm on pills and stuff like that, like, I'm super aggressive. I don't want to listen. I feel, you get me, like, I am a very calm person that I listen before yeah. taking action. But the pills didn't make me want to consider the next person anymore. If I feel like this is the right thing, I feel like I don't want to hear anything. Hmm. So I got into a lot of fights hmm. with with people I shouldn't have even. So every time you were, you were high, you were, you couldn't control yourself. Not like I couldn't control myself. Like my emotion. You could were, tell that like your emotions were. My changing. emotion was I zero. Where I teamed. What pills? Hmm. What pills were you taking? What pills? Like I did. I did. What pills did I do actually? Mm. <laughs> I started I started with trams. I initially they didn't introduce trams to me as a drug. They were like, if you take this pill, you are going to fuck a girl so good and stuff like that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so nah. <laughs> fixing a sexual advancement. Nah. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know, you know. <laughs> Agba. Oh, so <laughs> you don't I mean, do you, you don't do you don't for me. You don't do so, you for me. <laughs> exactly. Like, so I started taking it and I realized that this thing gets after the sex and stuff like that. I can't even go to sleep. Hmm. Yeah, I'm awake all night because I was like, oh my, on the long run, I thought I was addicted to this thing already. Like, I'm running to go and get it. I'm running to go and get it. You have money, you still have money to buy it. Like, you know, unfortunate thing, something that is very fortunate for me all through my university is like, to get money was just one call away. Mm. Yeah. Parents? Yeah. But how did um how they known? They didn't know. Obviously, they, you you are in, in school now. School, so I was in school, so they, they didn't know. In the head, my son they, my son they studied <laughs> to be to be linguistic. Like they a they, linguist, they didn't because my my father knows that when it comes to academics, I am super good. I'm good about academics. So so that means you are like a, you are always a bright person. So like, even you know, like academic doing, wise, yeah, like you've been. always been like even yeah, doing like your drug phase, you are still like. Good your studies. Yeah. Hmm. Got, like, I was still showing up, like, but all the girls in my class would be like, they would be like, please don't, we know you before. Hmm. Is that they like, they were trying to like, just, how, were, how were your friends like, like friends that knew you before? Yeah, friends that knew you before. Fee, before drug Okay, let me just call it for you. Like, the moment I started doing drugs, like, uh, when I was in school, the yeah. real, my real friends were people that knew me from home. Hmm. And probably people from my secondary school that are in the same university with me. Yeah. One thing I realized is like people from home separated from me. Mm. You get it. But I didn't care because I was having this impression like So your friends from your day ones they just started seeing that like um, Benny had changed so like they just started like detached like they started like They were you get me like yeah. they could feel like any arguments probably you or flame. chat maybe we are chatting the way I'm flaring up on them on chat and stuff like that. Like, I just, So that your behavior yourself was changing due to, yeah, the, yeah, like, yeah. Due to the drug. This guy, like, we could talk this out, but yeah. two seconds, you've blocked me. Like, I've blocked the person already. Like, So you're a mad person. <laughs> you're a mad <laughs> man. <laughs> I would call myself a man. I'm like, if you say anything to me that, or something that I wouldn't even get to me before, yeah. I've blocked you already. And it's like a big disrespect to mm. block someone. Yeah. It's like, I don't need you anymore. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the meaning. That's the meaning. So, I can't count the amount of people I actually, like, real friends that I really blocked, like, so, and probably after, like, two months, three months, I'm I'll... never going to lie, like, speaking of this thing, I'm not, I, I'm not going to lie, being, I went to Covenant University, so, like, okay. a lot of guys that, like, when we entered undergrad level, like, we're guys, we're friends, even, even some of people that are from secondary school and stuff, we had, like, a relationship because we knew how we, we kind of, like, grew up in a similar way, but, Somehow, somehow, along the lines, some people going to drugs and smoking so much and stuff. And, you know, there were people that, like, more by, like, our fifth year or in school, with more like, their, their behavior had changed. And we said, I, I, I probably don't want to associate with that kind of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there are people that, like, more with the with the way they they smoke casually, they did it well and like yeah. they still we're showed still up. Good. You know, they're still good. They didn't they didn't they didn't try all those pills, just add what they did and they stuck to what they did. You know, they loud, they just did that. Then they won late and they did it well. They did it occasionally and maybe just to relax and stuff. There's some people that did it in a respectful manner and you know, they're okay and everything they turn out well. But the people that took it overboard that tried pills, did every other thing. They just the way like their emotions and their behaviors changed. Like yeah. yours, you get so like even me too and like I, I, I have a friend now, like in that same situation, that almost 
do the guy change. I, I, they don't need to tell me. I started move back. Say, I don't need to award this guy mm. again. I like, you get like, man, this guy had path a difference. But it doesn't still show that more. This guy was still, he had a bright, like, he still had, right now he's even doing well. Yeah. Get, because he came to a realization and now he's even a, kind of like a changed person. So when you say, oh, you don't need it. When you, at the beginning, when you started saying, yeah. when you said you don't need it, like, you're, you, you better off without the drugs and stuff like that. I actually do agree. And not everybody comes to that realization. No, once that she goes into your mouth, actually, I feel like as a human being or animal, yes. <laughs> animal as well. You might, not, you might <laughs> see yourself to be so special. <laughs> yeah. But just look at the organs that animals have and the organs you have. The world makes you feel like you are different, right? Okay, hey, let's not talk about that for now. <laughs> so, let's cut it short, like, you know, one thing that makes human being different from animal is self awareness, right? Yeah. So that's like I feel like where were we? Remind me. <laughs> you don't love. I don't love. You're talking about your friendships. Yeah, your friendships, and then you're also talking about like progressions. How how you started like moving on from, you know, like our well, point. Let's, let's 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 just stick to the friendship spots. Okay. Yeah. So uh, me, uh, one thing that makes me avoid my friends who start going to drugs. Yeah. One thing I know is the finances. Yeah. Yes, because they start using their own, maybe let's say their salary or however they're making money and then they're putting it into drugs. Yeah. So to buy food, they're coming to meet me and all that. And like, it's very uncomfortable for me. Very, very. So did like, you have that? Listen, yeah, I had that face. You get me? Like, everybody that knew me in university, like, at a certain point, they knew I was the kind of person to bank on to get money from. Hmm. You get, like, I was always having money initially right before going into drugs. Even while I was still smoking weed, yeah. I was always having money. The least money I would have in school then was probably 5K that I'm not spending, but is in my account in case of anything. You get me? So, everybody should come and be like, please, can I get like 500, <clears throat> 1,000? I'm going to class, please, I need bike fee, 50, 15. Yeah. Like, I will give you, like, Not giving easy. you <laughs> doesn't stop me from... But they realize now, like, it now changed from a certain aspect, like, I didn't used to have any money anymore. And they were wondering, like, what's happening to this guy? Like, people that I used to call on, like, please, can I just, can you just lend me, like, 5,000 um, for, like, the week, before the week runs out, I'll, I'll pay you. I always come through. When it comes, I borrow. I always come through. But aside that, they were, like, they started having some kind of thing, like, he wants to finance the drug aspect. Mm. He wants to finance the drug aspect. He doesn't feel good. In did his you ever? Drugs. But, but did you ever borrow money to buy drugs? <laughs> they look me. Have you seen anybody that is getting like that? I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> standard, standard. To be honest, I won't even lie. I've had one friend that used to give me money to buy. You get, I no, just... If I know you, the drugs I'm going to buy, I won't give you the money. I mean, I won't lie. Not like I said I was ADD person, but... Let me tell you something. Uh, I, let me tell you have... something. Let me tell you something. You get me? It's really worse when you are with some kind of set of friends that they've known you even before you came into drugs. They will tell you, don't do drugs, don't do anything. But initially, if they were supposed to give you like 100,000, 50,000, just because they know you want to go and do drugs, they'll be like, oh, I don't have money. Please, let mm. me just give you 5,000. That's, that was that was how I was. I've, if I knew that, okay, this guy won't go buy Igbo, I could just reduce what I won't actually give him. Um, yeah. like, because I feel like money the, the money is going, 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 going down to waste. Yeah. So like, definitely, like you lost a lot of friends. Yeah. You lost a lot of friends and you gained some... New friends. You gained new friends. Yeah, those new friends. Let me just tell you, fast <laughs> forward, like the first thing about the drug world is like, I wouldn't say the amount the people you meet mm. on the drug um world, I'll call them vampires. <laughs> <laughs> they will ravage you, they will suck you to the last. Like they actually feel like, you know, you might be in the room getting high with a couple set of people, and yeah. what they are thinking about is not even what you are thinking. You might be thinking of, you might get high now, I'm thinking of like, oh. Oh my God, I need to do this. I need to learn how to do this. I need to learn how to do that. I need to learn. You might be thinking of self-improvement. Yeah. The future. The yeah. future. A lot of yeah. things like that. But the funny thing about the next man around you might be thinking about how to rip you off. Mm. Yeah. 
Yes, that's how it is. That's how it is. Like, you might see them like, ah, oh, Omo. Like, all of you smoke together. Like, you're yeah. supposed to be guys. Guys, they might be like, ah, Omo, I never chop since this city. I beg you, if you help me with this, that, this, that. You will do it for them. Continuously, you'll be doing it, you'll be doing it. Until you realize, like, you spent all your money on them. <laughs> What's really happening? Like, this guy doesn't do it for me. Alpha, Alpha, run me 5k. Yeah, <laughs> this guy I'll doesn't do it for me. This guy doesn't come for me anytime I'm asking him. But it's like, they feel like every time you are high, your senses are weak. Mm. Mm. So they, they, they prey on that. They prey on that. They prey on that, I guess. They prey on your vulnerability. Your vulnerability. Because you're vulnerable at that moment. At that moment. Yeah. Hey. Like, you might be... You, it's, it's, okay, let me just say, like, after getting high and stuff like that, you might be hungry and stuff like that. You being a normal woman, being, it's, it's not even the drug aspect that makes you like that. It's naturally instilling in you. But if you don't do drugs, you can easily tell that this person is trying to take advantage of me. Mm. But you might feel like I'm hungry. So he's hungry. We've been smoking together. Let's go and eat. something. Yeah. But you realize that you've been doing it for the past five months. This guy hasn't come through for you once. <laughs> was 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 there was there ever a time where you left your parents' place and then you moved into like a house where you and your guys are just on drugs fully? The whole thing is like, let me just explain it to you. The moment I left in um, secondary school, you get me. I didn't spend two months at home. Yeah. I was leaving home to university. Like, I didn't even spend up to two... Uh, I, maybe I spent like one month, two weeks at home. So I imagine, and I was a brother from my just one to... So you've yeah, never, really you. never really been home. I've never really been home. Mm. You get me? Mm, so true. home wasn't like a really welcoming place. For you. Like, even my younger ones, they didn't really know me. Mm. So there was no relationship with your family exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The only person they knew was the younger me. You. Mm. So, so probably because of like um your school and all of those things, it took you out of. So, like you felt like your your family they didn't really you know they didn't really they didn't they didn't know you, or they don't even know you. They just knew that like okay, just knew your younger self, basically. Mm. So, just just moving on from that one, I'm just wanted to ask like. Is there any, like, let's say near-death experience, like one kind traumatizing experience from drugs or from, like, you smoking weed that you want to share with us? That, like, maybe somebody listening to this has something similar. You guys, if you have something similar, like, I always tweet at us and stuff, like, has something similar or, like, you know, something that happened that you know that, okay, oh, changed or, or was, like, a wake-up breaking call point, for yeah. you. Yeah, breaking, point. breaking points, like, I've been smoking weed for, like, I started smoking weed around 2014, you get it? And you, nothing happened. So I'm just saying that if you are still smoking with out there and you put a limitation on it, you are very lucky. Yeah, you can smoke it till 90. <laughs> 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 yeah. So you get me that? Yeah. Like, um, so I'll I'll just take that far. Please don't go, don't go above that. If mm-hmm. you're addicted to weed, even if everybody's cursing you, I'll just beat your chest that you never go above the weed. So uh, around 2020, yeah, I was in the East, you get me? Mm. And I was hearing about Met, you get me? And the person I was with, my producer, then, he was telling me something that his friend from same secondary school, you get me? That he met the guy and the guy asked him for money. That he wants to go and buy meat. Hmm. And my friend was like, it could never give him that money. Because meat is like a very bad thing. Yeah. So the moment he came back home and we used to have a conversation, like meat was popping up in the conversation a couple of times. I'd be like, wow, I'll never do this thing. You get me. But you tried it eventually. This thing. The moment I left his house. His house. To put her court, you get me. I was trying, I was working on my EP then, you get me. So, I is his dad died. We he used to stay in my house in Abuja. So, after <coughs> his dad died, like he had to move close to his younger ones because his younger ones were based in 
Oweri. Yeah. So he had to move close to his younger one. So I had to go and meet him over there. So I was leaving this side and the closest place I could just stop by and hang out was with my friends in Portacourt. You get me? So the first day I got there, out of my own money, like someone was just like, oh bro, there's something I want you to, I want us to buy. Like, we went to buy, okay, it's not like he even told me like, no, there was no conversation about it. Yeah. We went to get weed. You get me? So I went to get weed and this happened around Ilele 1. Yeah. Yeah, continue. So, went to get weed and after getting the weed, it was like, should we get something else? Like, there's something that is really cool. Like, ice. No, I knew, I knew it as meat. Mm. <laughs> Not ice. ice. Okay. No, if he had said meat, you'd have said, you'd have no, said, no, 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 yeah. no, no. So he said ice, like, ah, it's ice here and stuff like that. Like, ah. Yeah, I'm, like, we are now let's, let's, I, No, I, I wasn't like anticipating because I'm really cautious about new drugs and stuff like that. Then, yeah. But, this is someone I knew from childhood and stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't know it was lost already. <laughs> no. Okay. Like someone you haven't seen in months and you're just seeing him again. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So and you didn't take time to study what was going, going on with, on him, with already. him already. So it was like, let's get this thing now. Like, I was like, okay, how much is it? Two to two hundred naira. All right. Two to two hundred naira. No worry. Come on, buy one thousand more the girls. <laughs> Our biggest boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. I, no, like one thing about me, like when I'm always traveling, like, I always come in with cash. That's one thing about yeah, me. Yeah, and I show for you. No, it's not that like I show for me. Like I don't move without cash. Mm. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. I rather just stay, gather money before I move. Move definitely. because the first three days, four days, one month, one week. Definitely. So I like, have to be able to feed myself. So mm. like one sack, two hundred naira, or like I was a portion like the, the wrap is in four papers four papers, over there okay. in Portacourt. Okay, Portacourt. No, yeah. Okay. So. We went back home and he brought out a lighter and this thing was like glass. You get me? And once he burns the foil from the town, like the thing goes into liquid. Hmm. And that alone was like, wow, what's hmm. this? You get me? Like, and uh, so just cut, I don't know, is it, is, it, is it right if I say how it's being used? I mean, say, say. Okay. So, like, there's, like, a biro who, who would just, it would bring out the biro and break the biro into two and put the foil, like, the biro, you put the biro in your mouth and mm-hmm. it lights the foil with the stuff under it, like, and the flames that come out, like, the, va- the vapor, mm-hmm. the thing is coming, this is like a smoke. Yeah. But it vaporizes up, like, up into the- so you have to suck it in. Yeah. So, like, I did it and... I was feeling adrenaline rush all over my body, like it was so cool. I was like, "Wow, one more now! This is not going to take right from from now. No, they mm. smoke weed again." Mm. Yes, I said that at that point. I won't deny it. I was like, "Man, this thing is this thing makes you even think down weed, like uh, everything just declare." Yeah, was it, this was 2020? 2020. 2020. 2020, yeah. Mm. 2020. Around probably, um, let me say, around November. Okay, that was after lockdown? Yeah, after lockdown. Okay. So you did it then and then you're just like, oh my, this high is... It's different. Like, different. Wow. Because <clears throat> I'm so agile, like, I'm with the television and my face is so, like, I can't even doze off for a second or anything, like, Till dawn, I'm active. awake. Hmm. I'm active. I was like, wow, I love this. So did you do more? Or like, it was just that? Listen, now, let me just get to the point. So, it got to a point. It was now them that I used to do it that is warning me. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that I'm laughing. But... Like, they'll be like, guy, you don't need to take this thing too much. This, that, this, that. And I'll be like, wait till I don't take I buy 1,500 in around. And finish them. And I finish them. They tell me I don't take them to this. In a day, you finish it in a day. Two hours. You no, know, it, com- it comes in Portacourt. The thing in Portacourt is like, they make it so small. Very, very small. 
It's like a ripoff, obviously. Yeah. It's obviously a ripoff. So you can never get satisfied. So you keep coming for, keep so you keep coming coming for, for more. more. But they'll be like, guys, you are losing it already. Like, it doesn't make any sense what you are doing. And I'll be like, no, this thing is way too cheap for you to be questioning me. Hmm. That's how I felt initially. I didn't know this thing. So, on the long run, like, it's seen up on in Portaco, like, so things started gathering up. You get, yeah. I started feeling some things that were unreal. Hmm. But I couldn't tell then that it was unreal. Like, for example, now, I started feeling like, I might, I might probably sit down somewhere and this guy might be there now and I'd be looking at him like, what's he doing there? Is this guy trying to do something to me? So, so you're everything you're hallucinating. Like, yeah. hallucination on the yeah. highest yeah. level. Yeah. So, unless I start feeling like there might be a sound, and I'll be like, is there a spirit in this house? <laughs> <laughs> like, you get me like, all you, like, let me just call it this way, like, all your fears will pick up on you. Mm. Mm. Everything that you are uncertain about in life <laughs> will start displaying to you. If you used to believe that there's ghosts, you might start thinking that there's ghosts around you. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? Yeah. And the worst thing is that it comes with like, you are super heightened. No more... So how did how did how did your how did your meth journey like? Yeah. How did it affect you as a person? That's, I'm still driving at it. I'm still driving I, at I feel it. You, I feel, drive, See, drive on, drive on, drive the like, go. <laughs> the, the worst thing is like if there's a you know it's very normal for a normal woman be like if you are used to if you are a woman being if you, even if something is making a noise like you don't even care, but if you are on meth, if you are in the slightest sound. You are so curious that like, what's making this sound? Like I want to know this. What's going on around here and stuff like that? Like, so it is out of all your like points of like uh, obsessive use of yeah. different drugs. You feel like your meth was, was the, the worst. Yeah, meth was like the downfall for it. Meth was your breaking point. It was when you yeah. knew that Omo, you need to. And how did you arrive at that? How did you think that Omo, I need to yeah, like, get a hold of yeah. myself? You know the thing. Eh? How did your healing journey start? My like healing journey was like when I got home, I couldn't eat anymore. I was always having issues with my parents. You get like any slight thing like this, I'm flaring up and stuff like that. They're affecting me. Well, had they known yeah, that I was drunk? The first thing I did when I came back home was like, I took all my clothes and took it outside and I lighted fire on all my clothes. For real? Yeah. Do you know what caused it? Like, while I was in my friend's place in Portacourt, I might just go to the wardrobe now. I was already on meds. If I wasn't on meds, I would have felt like it's a normal thing. I might just go there now and there's a bunch of like 200 cockroaches running through my clothes. Mm. So I feel like probably, you know, my fears were catching up with me. I feel like So you just imagine cockroaches are running. <laughs> I feel like, you no, know, I saw cockroaches. I used to see cockroaches. But I feel like probably this is way more spiritual stuff like that. Like probably, you know, my fears were catching up with me in real time. Like, I couldn't think. Rationally. Like, you know, if you think to the left, you think to the right. But I was just diving anywhere I could dive to. There was no second thought, nothing. No, anything that comes to my head is what goes. Hmm. So the moment I got to him, I was like, probably, no, those guys, I don't trust them. They were trying to probably do some kind of stuff to me and stuff like that. So I took out my clothes and bought it. And my sister came out like, you bro, instead of buying the stuff, just give it to me. This is what I still knew. I was like, you don't know anything about it. Like, you don't get to those clues. I just put petrol on it and light it. Up. Bam. The really funny thing. Not yeah. the funny thing. Oh. Mm. I burnt on my clothes and there's no reserve. So everything you had, you burnt? Yeah. Like, I burnt everything. I didn't have any reserve and stuff like that. So, the second day I woke up, like, I was probably in my boxers and stuff like that. So that means everything, like, I was at that point that I started to know that, like, it, it was, it was, it was yourself. Like, how did you help yourself? I didn't help myself. So there was no point that you... So did your family know that, okay... It yeah. was my father that helped me. Hmm. Hmm. You, you took it to church or what? What church? It was church. <laughs> um, <coughs> you know, my father was like... You know, it wasn't really like... So how was, was his approach into helping you? Because I'm just, I'm just curious. My father is, is a policeman. You get me? So he's a very, he's a very good questionnaire. 
if he wants to get something from you, it won't go direct. He might just be asking you some stupid questions that... He's interrogating. He, like, yeah. and you might be pissed. Um, anytime he's asking me those questions, I'm being pissed. Like, why is he asking me this stupid, like... Yeah, these questions are too simple. You know the answer already. Why are you mm. asking me? I didn't know that he was just trying to... Get... get understand what was going on with mm-hmm. me so like fortunately sometimes like just came and probably got police just got some police guys from his office and it was like i needed to do something for me and they just came in bonded me in uncles and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i met I, I was in rehab you get me yeah, in rehab for how long two months two months yeah. So while I was there and like so I was that, I was in rehab experience like I've I've always wondered what do they do in rehabs like? What? What do they do in rehabs? Man sorry remind they give you a lot of meds. Mm. Yeah. And they give you food. <laughs> My God. You eat you were, eat. were you having withdrawals at that at that point? Yeah, I was having withdrawals like um how would I explain it? Like my first two, three, my first two weeks there, like I wanted to just find a way I could get met. met. But there was no way. Just like the dreaming. There was no way. Everybody did like no. The funny thing is like you're in a garden of like eight people and all of them are talking about met. How can we get this thing? How can we get this thing? So I started to understand like something is really (coughs) happening. Like people are really like this thing is being flooded into the society. To the society. Hmm. You get me? Like when you're in rehab and the majority are talking about mates. So obviously it's the new trend. Yeah. And they are like it's not like I wouldn't call them uh what would I call them? Like, uh, 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 they are victim of circumstances. You get me? Like, obviously, they might, you might have the strong will that I don't want to do it. I don't want to do this, do that, do that, do that. But, bro, like, there's victim of circumstances valid also. So, so if they take it, it's like it gets away from their problems. And stuff like, like, while we're there, and we started having conversations and stuff like that. And they want it, they would go any miles to get yes, it. Yes. So, you see someone saving up, like maybe his parents visit him and they give him money. Yeah. He's saving it up and he's calling someone through the window, can you get me for me? Did that, is that. I'll be like, man, this is out of it, man. So, probably, like, I stayed there for a while, for two months. They were giving me so, so different kind of drugs, like morning, afternoon, night. As they were giving us those drugs, I was adding weight. I was getting fat, 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 fat. I was like, oh, I eat myself now. You get... but, but was there any point when, like, you knew, like, okay, you were <laughs> the mess out of the system, and like, you were good? Let me tell you something. Rehab doesn't satisfy anything. Hmm. That's something you don't know. You can go to rehab, you can relapse even after going to rehab. Let me explain something. Let, let's just go straight. To, let me just keep going down into it. So, while I was there for like two months, I got. Um, Pills like they, they were giving us a lot of pills, yeah. prescribed pills from doctors, physicians, and stuff like that. And we're having therapy sessions and everything like that. Definitely. And little sports just to interact to make us reconnect to the real world. Yeah. You know, you get me? Like the girls are separated and stuff like that. But whenever I want to do sport, they bring the girls to us. So you that you've not seen what you used to do before, you probably have chased women. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're looking at the girl. That girl was so fine. Like yeah. I want to talk to that girl and stuff like that. She has a drug problem too. Mm. So you you are already your fantasy is already changing. Yeah. From yeah. drugs to something Zooming. else. Yeah. So let me just cut this short. Like when I left the rehab and stuff like that, I still went back. You still went meth? back to yes meth. Still you. relapsed. I relapsed. So while I was doing it. I was like, all those things that happened to me before, I want to see them happen again. Like, let me see, maybe they will happen to me again. None. No, if all I... my fears were gone. Like, the reason why all those things got to me was like, all the uncertainty 
I had were picking up on me. Mm. So I was already, all those two months that I was here, I was already sure about Good how the world it. works. Wow. So my mind was already built. Mm. But you know one thing that happened to me on Met that I haven't mentioned? What? I couldn't sleep. Ooh. That's when you're listening to some Nigerian podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you told I me this before sleep, we started. Like for a whole year. So I was listening on a lot. I bought all my clothes. You mm. get me? So and you couldn't sleep. Like that's one of the like you saw me, I was one of the things we were struggling with. I went online and I was reading about it. And there was no issue documented with what was happening with me. How would you feel if it was you? Something happened to you and there's nothing documented mm-hmm. about it. Mm. You feel like, wow, this thing is only happening to me in the world. Right? So, um, I started feeling some type of way. I was having suicide thoughts. Was this after you relapsed? Was this after you relapsed? Like after or, you go out of Before you rehab? went to rehab? After I got out of rehab, I couldn't sleep. Okay, okay. And that was when you, having, you, you became suicidal. Suicidal. You get me? Mm. I couldn't sleep. I was feeling like, all these meds can't even get me back to normal. I could never be normal. Like you feel like you could like what you were done for. Yeah. Because everything, I couldn't do everything. That's one thing people don't know about sleep. Sleep makes you concentrate. Sleep makes you progressive. Mm. If you can't sleep for a week, just check out your activities that you are doing. Everything is, you, are, you, you just be existing. You can't make plans. Hmm. So I was just living off like, Anything that comes, it comes. Anything that comes, it comes. Yeah. Everything that comes, it comes. You know, when everybody's sleeping at home and I'm wide awake at night, waiting for like one o'clock, okay, one o'clock, two o'clock, okay, three o'clock, four o'clock, it's done, six o'clock, four so, in the so, morning, I'm out. So you just, you just sit down, you just sit down and just be looking. Yeah. Time will just be going like that. Time will just be going for yeah. a whole year. Bro, can, do you imagine? Like, I could, I'm this kind of person that anytime I'm having like, Probably anything is happening to me in the past. Anything that is happening to me over time, like and I just get a book and read it, and my mind is back to normal. I'm, I can concentrate on anything I want to do. Mm. If I can get a novel and I finish it or read it to half, mm. I can concentrate. I can do anything I want to do. Anything. Like mm. let me just tell you my secret about being like a top notch student in class. If I'm having an exam next week, the first thing I do is get a novel. If you get me. Once I can concentrate and read that novel. Yeah, You're I can't read my books. Yeah. So, 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 like, moving on because of time, yeah, is, not yeah, really, yeah. time yeah. is not really on our side. We just want to, I mean, I just, like, you already said you relapsed again after so, rehab. So, like, me, how did you, how did you, yeah, like, tell breaking, when, you get, when did you know that? Yes, and because I don't what know. What was the process? My spirit, okay, because. Let me tell you this, this part. The worst part is, like, going on Google and looking for. Um, how to get past this. No, so, like, this, the way I could commit suicide and it's, I wouldn't feel pain. You get me? You were even at that point. I was even at that point. I go, I went on Google over 50 times looking for different, browsing through pages. Like when you've gone over like 10 pages looking for... And you know the funniest thing about Google tracking you? Google will be tracking like if you need assistance, something like that. They were like... Like therapy? Yeah. Like Google is so programmed. Like, like Google knew that this yeah, guy was about him. to yeah. commit so because I was saying I was saying stuff like if you are trying to commit suicide and stuff like that, like you can call this number and so stuff like that for help and stuff like that. I, I was like, I was just looking for a painless way to die. Like I can't do this anymore. I need to sleep. I was begging every day, like, God, please will I sleep today? Will I sleep today again? Now today I can't sleep again today. I'm still going to stay over the night today again. Mm. Everybody's sleeping. I'll be the one who mm. wide awake, like. Man, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't release any music. I couldn't do any goddamn thing. People were wondering, where are you? Where are you? I just fish out of the mode black and I went off the radar. Wow. You get me? Oh, the mode just felt like this guy is all serious. Like, because I didn't tell anybody what was. There's only people I told. Shout out to Tony. Shout out to um Tony. Shout out to you guys, man. Yaz. Because those are the people like I didn't tell Yaz, but the moment I told Tony I couldn't sleep for like months, it was the first person that I was like, you couldn't sleep for months? Is it possible? Like, now I know what it feels like. He understood instantly what it feels like 
the effect. I didn't have to explain to him because I'll be telling people around me. The reason I, say I give up telling people is because if I tell people, like, believe. it's not possible. You yeah, can't do it. It's not possible. 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 You can't do it without sleeping. Now I, I just like, like okay. I stopped telling people because they didn't believe me anymore. I feel like as if the meds yeah, was taking is making him brain. insane yeah. and stuff like that. So I just cut it short. Like shout out to Tony because every time Tony sees me, it was like. Anytime he comes around, it was giving me weights of money because he knew I couldn't compete. Com- yeah. I couldn't even be prog- um, progressive. To so those are those are those are the only those are the only friends. This people you're yeah. mentioning, yeah. the only people who are actually there for you. Yes. Shout out to them. But were they were they users too? What they? No. But they just they just they understood. Just they were yeah they were they, they are not users. They like, just yeah. they just understood the effect. Yeah. But how did you get past it? As was just that's just for me. I'm just very okay. interested. So I feel like after I feel like there are listeners that after doing it for a while, like this is after you relapsed, are you? Yeah, after I relapsed, I just felt like this doesn't do anything to me anymore. Like it's just a waste of money. Like, and I started realizing, like I started having the real sense of how the world works. Why the self fantasy pill, all those things. Like it's they true. just want you to feel. They are selling it for a feeling. They are selling a feeling. Mm. They just want to be in your finances. And you mm. want to stop having feelings. So you just, you basically like... Now, I was like... And I started realizing like... You have to feel... Pain. You have to feel everything naturally. Yes. You don't need anything. You don't need, so need, you don't need yeah. anything. If you are feeling sad, feel it. Feel it. Yeah. If you are feeling hurtful, feel it. If you, you are feeling hurtful, go through it. Like, don't, don't try and escape it. Like, sorry... Don't, don't try and escape it. Like, they know, people selling all these things know that people are trying to escape really? how they feel right now. And mm. that's what traps you into that world. Because, you know, if you feel bad, it's like, okay, I can do this and I'll mm. escape it. But all through I transition, I wouldn't lie, I was smoking cigarette. Mm. Until now, I still smoke cigarette. Yeah, but you're straight now. No, I'm straight, no drugs, nothing, nothing. How long has it been? Probably, um... I lost track actually, but she's close to me. Since I, I left the East. Yeah. Because my friends would go around and get it and I would take it with them, but still and still, I would, I would just look at them like, I never know me. They would bring a lot of pills, like, I don't need this anymore. So, like, how long? I'm like, just say. A year? Um, a year, two years? A year, six years. months? I couldn't sleep for a year. So like what time? I just started sleeping probably when I got to Lagos. And I didn't do it for probably let's just say now that I've been clean should be around like eight months now. Eight mm. months. Mm, that's that's really nice. That's really nice. I'm very proud of that's you. Really Bro, nice. like I could never do it anymore because it doesn't make like it I don't need this. Like if I'm feeling sad, let me feel it. Like I can I can even make the best out of my sadness, like I don't know why people are trying to escape it. Escape. Yeah. I'm really yeah. happy, really happy. I'm, I'm, about I'm, your journey. We're happy and then we're like, yeah. I'm really proud of you, bro. Like, yeah. so like I'm, I'm trying to let people know that if you are caught up in my situation and you notice that there's no documentation for you not being able to sleep because you tried mates, please don't commit suicide. Because on the long run, I met someone too that was going through the same thing with me. And this was caused by mates. Mm. Hmm. So I felt like I was not really alone. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was a deep conversation that led to it. Because he was telling him that he's suicidal. And I asked him, why are you suicidal? Like, and he it? broke it down to me like, Mix. he can't sleep. <sighs> that he's always awake at night. And stuff when like did that. You, started, you started sleeping the... the when My sleep pattern isn't back to normal, but as I was even coming to this place, I was sleeping in the car. Yeah, you could. Also, just to mention, like, serious, <coughs> sincere appreciation, man. This guy came all the way from Ekbe. Like, you guys, you know... The determination the time, to... Like, Jigia. Like, so, like, he, he really meant to share his experience and just to help people out there. And yeah. with the, the email he sent, he was very clear about the message he wanted to pass. He just wants to help people, man. He wants to use his personal... And him being bold enough and courageous enough to even share all of these things that he has shared yeah. with us today. Like, honestly, don't know how in-depth, like, how I... I the gratitude, how, how thankful I you am. Know, because like, the, the whole thing is, like, you know, your family start looking at you like a garbage and stuff mm. like that. And all those things. And like, it got to a point like, I felt like I could never do because I felt like the thing had a grip on me. Mm. You get? 
So you couldn't let go. I couldn't let go. But I would advise anybody that is into mates and everything. The best thing you can do for yourself is go to an environment where you can get it. Hmm. That will really help you. Over, like, yeah. If you go to an environment that you can't get it, like it really help you understand that this is rubbish. They just want to get into my finances. finances yeah. Anything they sell to you, they just want they to want get. They want to make money. They don't. They, they don't, don't care. care they are selling poison to you yeah. or anything. They just, just want to money. get into your pocket. Yeah. I feel. You. So yeah, thank you so much. And like those of you listening to this episode to this podcast, I feel like Omar, I didn't even I didn't even have time to even like drop any comic relief for this episode <laughs> because it was really really like enlightening. And I was able to even obviously like I've had friends that have been in this position, but then with your experience, I've never heard of you know yeah. the way you explained yeah. it. That we only sit in movies, sit in like snowfall. Yeah. I've watched snowfall. You see the effects on drug, but you know speaking of personal experience, you there was a timeline towards it, like the effects for it for you and. I'm really like proud of you, bro. Thank like you, bro. I won't even lie, man. Like you've, Thank you, you've right. done you've done yourself you've done yourself a great thing. And I feel like I feel like you can only go higher from here. You can only become a better oh, like, person. I'm gonna stop even now because <laughs> you know, you were asking me like, did I change friends or anything? Yeah. I don't That's need to like, change friends anymore. Yeah. If you want to smoke cocaine in front of me, do, do it. it. But you will never. Yeah. Because you, you don't Can me cow can't go through my body anymore. Yeah. No. Tell us no. No, you can't. There's not. There's nothing you can. Cause I noticed some things like the moment I stepped out of it, I started realizing the world. People that are really, really, really successful in this world, they don't get addicted to anything. Mm. They are cool with it. If they see you doing it, they are, they are really cool with it. They won't tell you don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But bro, they will never let it get. The worst you see people, they, they, they might drink every day and stuff like that. You might call them an alcoholic or anything. They would rather be an alcoholic than be a drug addict. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Right. I I'm, I'm really happy that you came here to see this. I'm really happy. And I'm, I... drug drug use since since I was in uni, like drug use is something that is a subject that I've been very very particular about. Well, Even yeah. before uni, um, I the environment I I grew up in a church too, so like okay. I used to hear stories of addiction, this, that, that. So it's something And that the funny thing is, like, anybody could be addicted. Anybody could be addicted. The person you love the most might just become an yeah. addict. Anybody could be addicted. And the worst I mean, thing... I've seen, I've seen, I've seen the process. I've seen guys I've, I live with start from cigarettes, they move to this, 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 the next thing that's doing crack and all that. So, yeah, it's really, it's really nice that you, that, that you came, came to share a story. Thank it's you, really nice and, like, um, I, I really do appreciate, like, Especially for the fact that um, you really literally Broke came on down. like a four hours journey to come. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just to, this of how, like just yesterday he reached yesterday out to us. Yesterday reached out to us and we were like, like, like you know what the determination. He, I called him. He got to the studio before us. He even he got, got to the studio, got to the studio two hours, hours before, before us. <laughs> like that's that's how, how dedicated he was yeah. to share his journey and like No, I feel like anybody that has been armed by mates and can't sleep is actually thinking about suicide right now. But I'm trying to tell you that I can't sleep now. Yeah. You tell them. A whole year to wait. To tell them. So you, if I can wait for a whole year, why can't you wait eight months? Mm. Why can't you wait six months? Mm. Why can't you wait till you get back to your feet? Yeah. yeah. Your body is fighting it. I can tell you that. And you will still be able to sleep. So yeah. please don't think of suicide. So as you as guys, action. make sure you share this episode to anybody you that, really need to. that really needs to hear this and hear the experience. So <laughs> I beg, if you feel like there's a friend of yours, a family member of yours that needs to hear this, just, you know, just share this episode and subscribe to our YouTube to see how he is and see what he's doing. Thank you so much for being with Benny. Thanks. Benny Soldier. Benny Soldier. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Listen to his yeah. music too. He, has, he yeah. didn't even talk about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to do self promo. I was expecting you guys uh, yeah. uh, no, we'll, but, we'll, we'll, plug your, we'll plug your music in the episode description. description. Thank you. Thank, thank you, bro. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming, yeah, man. Yeah, right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's all good.